welcome to episode 46 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folktales. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we learn how Grendel came stalking for human flesh that met his match in Beowulf in conflict with demons. Over the moor in the black mist, Grendel came stalking. The wrath of God was upon him. He saw the high hall and hungered for human flesh. Steadily he strode below the dark clouds so that he might peer into the feasting chamber, which was decorated with gold and shining with ornaments. It was not the first time he had entered, but never before did he meet therein with a mightier warrior and braver watchman. So came that accursed fiend towards the hall. The door was shut and strongly barred with iron bands, but he smote it with great hands, and it flew open. The demon was bent upon evil and swollen with fury as he tore through the entrance. With swift footsteps he strode his silent way over the finely paved floor. He raged inwardly, and in the darkness awesome lights like to fire burned in his eyes. He surveyed the hall. He saw warriors asleep on the benches, and his heart exulted as he resolved to devour each one separately ere the night was spent. But he had come to his last feast of human flesh. Beowulf lay watching Grendel. Soon the hero beheld how suddenly the fiend snatched up his prey. Without delay, the grim monster clutched a sleeping warrior, tore him asunder, chewed his flesh, and drank his blood, swallowing great mouthfuls quickly until he completely devoured the man, even his hands and feet. Then Grendel came near his claws, darting out towards Beowulf as he lay in bed. But the hero divined the demon's purpose, and he clutched the monster's arm and threw his weight upon it. Never before did Grendel feel a stronger hand grip, and he was suddenly stricken with terror and sought to escape. In vain, he struggled to break free so that he might take flight into the blackness of night back again to the demons of his gang. But Beowulf was mindful of his evening boast. He leapt from bed. He stood erect. Tightly he grasped the monster. His fingers burst. Grendel twisted and swayed backward. He sprawled towards the floor, but the hero went with him nor relaxed his grip. The wily fiend sought to slip without, if it were possible, and then flee to the darksome fen. He realized what strength there was in Beowulf's hands. A luckless visit indeed had the monster made to Heorot. Loud rang the clamor in the hall. Terror seized upon the Danes in their safe dwellings. Without there was panic among them. Beowulf and Grendel raged with fury. The building resounded as they struggled and crashed and about. It was a wonder that the feasting hall was not shattered, and that it ever survived the savage conflict. It might well have fallen to the ground, but the timbers were bound together by well-forged iron bands. Never could it be destroyed by hands, although the flames might devour it. Then arose a loud and awesome scream. The Danes were stricken with terrible dread because they heard the demon's cries of despair, his screeching song lamenting for his wound. Beowulf held fast. He would not suffer the man-eating fiend to escape alive. Of little account was Grendel's life to the world of men. Battled heroes in the hall sought to help their lord. They fell upon the monster without fear and smote him with their war swords, but without avail, for Grendel's body was 
charmed against weapon wounds, and they could do him no hurt. But miserable was to be the life ending of the fiend. His alien spirit was fated to travel afar to be bound by devils. The crime worker, the devourer of men, the enemy of God, realized that his body would endure naught or give him help and sure defense. Brave Beowulf had him in his power. Each loathed the other with fierce hate. In agony was Grendel, a wound gaped on his shoulder. It was torn wider and wider. The sinews snapped. The flesh burst. The glory of battle was given to great Beowulf. Sick unto death, Grendel must indeed escape to his joyless lair below the darksome fen. He knew that his life days were spun to an end, so tearing away, he left his arm and shoulder in Beowulf's hand. Thus was the desire of the Danes achieved, and the boast of the great hero fulfilled. The high hall was cleansed of Grendel. That indeed did the people who were stricken and put to shame realize when they entered Heorot. From, from the great roof had Beowulf suspended the arm of the night demon with its iron strong hand and clutching claws. In the safety of morning, the warriors hastened to the hall. From far and near, the people gathered to gaze with wonder on the traces of the conflict. The blood track of the monster were on the ground. The warriors followed his trail on horseback until they came to the water of sea demons, which they beheld weltering with blood. The wave searched red and hot with gore. The death doom Grendel had laid his life down in his lair, his heathen soul. Then Hala snatched him away. Then the mounted warriors rode back and proclaimed the tidings and the glory of Beowulf, of whom they said that no other warrior between the seas and the world ever was as equal or worthier of a kingdom. Then was a great rejoicing. Warriors held races on horses, one with another, and a minstrel fane sang of Beowulf's deed, and of Siamund, the Volson, who slew the dragon. To the hall went many retainers to behold the arm of Grendel. The king went to view it with his nobles, and the queen with her maidens. Hrothgar gave thanksgiving to God, because that the deed of Grendel was ended. And addressing Beowulf, whom he called the valiant hero, he vowed that henceforth he would love him as a son. Thy fame, he said, shall endure forever. Beowulf spake in answer and said he had done the deed with great goodwill. Would, he said, that thou hast witnessed the conflict, I thought to hold down the feed on his deathbed until he died, but I could not prevent his going away. The warriors were silent about him. They looked on the arm suspended from the roof. They saw the finger claws, which were like steel. Then they said that no weapon could have cut off that bloody battle hand of the demon. A great feast was given in Herot in Beowulf's honor. Hrothgar gave unto the hero as gifts a golden banner, a helm and war armor, and richly jeweled sword. Eight battle steeds gave he also, and on one was the king's war saddle, adorned with embroidery and gems. To each of the hero's followers was given a sword, and blood money was paid for the warrior whom Grendel had devoured. At the feast, a minstrel sang of the deeds of King Finn, and of Hengest, Hanaf, and Hildebur. How Finn married Hildebur and the sister of Hanaf, who was afterwards slain and burned at the king's hall. And how Hengest went against Finn and slew him, returning to the fatherland with Hildebur. When the song was ended, Hrothgar's queen, Watchtheo, gave the golden cup to the king, and then bore it to Beowulf, to whom she gave two golden armlets, a mantle, and a jeweled collar which was as precious as the collar of Breezing. 
which Hama took from Eomanrich, the one which Hama took from Eomanrich, the wondrous collar did Beowulf afterwards give to his king, Huliark, who wore it when, in after days, he fell fighting against the Frisians, when to them it passed. The feast was then spread, men drank wine, they knew not stem weird, destiny, as had many of the nobles before them there. And when evening came, Rothkar rose and left the hall, and Beowulf went also to sleep in an outer dwelling. The benches were cleared and laid out as sleeping couches. One among the revelers was doomed that night to die. Each of the warriors hung his armors and weapons on the wall at his head, ready for sudden alarm and night attack. Brave men were they. And here is where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales. Many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey. <laughs>